Hello again, everybody. We're back again here at Gen Z TV. Joining me again is my cousin Justin. How are you going? Hey, the guys. Not too bad. How are you? Very good. Yes. <laughs> Uh, look, guys, we did promise that we're going to cover an episode about Justin's journey, finding his new job this year. So as promised, here we've got an episode where he's going to talk to you guys about sort of the struggles that he's had, um, some tips that he has found along the way, and hopefully we learn a thing or two from today's uh, sort of episode. So I'll pass it back over to you, Justin. Cool. Thank you, Chris. So as we touched upon in the last episode, guys, we're going to be talking about uh, my experience in finding my first uh, real job when I finish uni. So just to give you a background, let's let's kind of think of this as a story. So we'll have the intro, the middle, and the conclusion. And Tristan can uh, just jump right in whenever he feels like I missed something or if I wanna, if he wants to ask me a question. Yeah. So let's get it. Okay. So I finished uni and at the end of 2019, so December 2019, I finished my exams. Then I checked the transcript, and luckily I was fortunate enough to pass all of them. So fast forward to. 2020, where my graduation ceremony was going to happen in April. And of course, uh, what no one expected to happen that year was uh, COVID. So COVID came out of nowhere. But in the months be before uh, COVID actually came into Australia, in Sydney, I was telling myself, oh, yeah, um, I'll just spend January and, and February of 2020 just chilling, you know, uh, yeah. having a huge break, just enjoying my holidays, enjoying no uni life, no more studying, like too late, no more memorizing, no more lectures. So that's exactly what I did. I literally did not even bother to search for a job. I just, I just vibed. I just chilled. I just did whatever, like with my friends. Like I, I just did everything, like everything that's not working, basically. Then after a few weeks, after I decided that enough is enough, like no more partying, no more, no more having a good time, I decided to type on my laptop. Uh, I, I search on Google Seek. So yeah. Seek is uh, Australia's uh, a job job search generator where it provides you a list of jobs. So then I, I began my very first job search and then I was looking at the roles. So just for context, I studied a major in human resource management and business information systems. So I had two majors where I wanted to focus on, but I wasn't sure which kind of uh, major to focus on completely. So I was just kind of applying like whichever comes my way. Mm. So, yeah. So when I was applying, I honestly expected that I would be able to get a job maybe after like five or 10 uh, interviews or five or 10 uh, job shirts, jo yeah. job search. But then that didn't happen because COVID happened in March and April. So when that hit us in Sydney, basically all jobs closed. Everybody worked from home. There was no need to hire graduates, uh, graduates that was myself because all the work was being done from the comfort of everyone's room. Yeah. So they didn't need to add stuff. So by that point, I was like, maybe I, I, I'll just take a break again. So what became a two month break ended up becoming an extra three or four month break. So yeah. I pretty much my first six months of 2020 was like a sabbatical where I just mm -hmm. stayed home and enjoyed myself. So it, it was a prolonged holiday. Which made sense because there was really no jobs on offer in the market at that time, unless you were working in the health profession. Maybe if you were a nurse or a doctor, or if you were some sort of essential worker, then you most likely be able to find a occupation. Yeah. But in, in my case, uh, what I studied isn't really essential, you could say. So hence the prolonged holiday. So when Sydney started to open back up, I think it was in late May, like May, June, July onwards, I started to reapply again around July period. Then actually, I I think after a week or so, I did get an interview uh, to for, for one of the roles I applied for. So I went all the way to the city and then I, I was able to meet the staff and then they interviewed me. And then in the end, I saw it, it was looking good. I'm like, yeah, they, they seem they were... Uh, they, they like someone like me, or maybe I did enough in, in the interview to qualify for the next round. But then I didn't get into the next round at all, so I got rejected. So that was, you could say, my first official rejection. Um, I, I've been rejected from 
just by emails. So when the employer sends you an email saying, oh, sorry, you were unsuccessful, it means they, they really don't care. So yeah. they're just doing that, you know, just to be nice. But this one, they called me up and they said, oh, sorry, um, like you have the personality, you have the characteristics to do it, but the thing you're lacking is the experience, which mm-hmm. didn't come as a surprise because I, I was a fresh grad out of uni. So I knew virtually nothing. I, besides the stuff I learned at uni, I didn't know anything else. So when I first experienced that first rejection, I'm like, oh, okay, it's okay. Um, I'll just keep trying again. But then I saw it, uh, from that experience, I'll be able, it'll help me immensely for the next role I applied for. But then it, it started to become like a cycle. So when I say cycle, I mean, you apply, then I was able to get an interview, um, talk to them, maybe get into another round of interviews, but then always at the end, I would get rejected yeah. and it would come to two things. Either I wasn't uh, qualified enough or they found someone more qualified than me. So basically you have to be qualified for the job that you want. Um, mm. So this was a cycle I'd repeated on for a few months. Um, almost like even till early this year so at first it was okay but then slowly it started to become like a like a mental struggle i have to admit um if anyone's finding a job uh, usually like i really expected to jump straight into it when i finish my studies but that's not the case the reality is uh, you're going to struggle unless you're some unless you're very intelligent or you're you have tons of experience under your belt then most likely it'll take you some time to find to find your first uh, real job because the job market is is broad, but then there's a lot of people looking for jobs as well. So you're not the only one applying. So you're putting yourself up against like hundreds of people who maybe may not have the same experience as you, but they may be stronger in certain aspects. So yeah, you have to keep that in mind. So then eventually it was already December 2020 and I remained unsuccessful. So in that moment, I, in those moments, sorry, I was telling myself, oh, just keep pushing. I like to tell myself that good things come to those who wait, you know, um, because these things, there's always an end to everything. In everything you do, there's always an end. And I was just willing myself on, like, oh, like pep talking myself, like, even, oh, you can do it, you can do it. Like, like surely this one's the right job, right? But then, uh, to tell you the truth, uh, I, at the back of my mind, I was like, oh, like I'm seeing all my friends uh, get, getting all their first jobs and then I'm kind of getting left behind. And then like, am I really not that good enough? Like, yeah. am I really, uh, what, what am I really lacking? Like you could say, uh, like I, uh, maybe I was being overdramatic, but um, like it's been a year already at this stage. It's been a year and a bit. So I was, yeah, it, the mind games were starting to appear and I was just like, just like in a, like in a zone that I couldn't get out of, like in a hole. So then, um, it was 2021 already. So new year, new year, new start, right? So new, new year's resolution, you know, like everyone's pumped for a new year. Uh, but then COVID doesn't go away in a new year, as we see. So 2021, I decided, okay, so new year. So this is going to be the year. So I was re-motivated and I was applying again. So I was adjusting the way I, I applied. So I changed words in my resume. I change even the way I speak, the way I present myself. And I make sure I, I learn everything from all the interviews I've been rejected on to carry it on and apply it in the, in this, in the future interviews to come. So I, even though I did get rejected a lot of times, I make sure I learn from the experience because if you don't learn from these experiences, then you're not going to grow. So even though this time was a time of struggle, there is always a good in every situation. There's always a positive aspect in every situation, as negative as it may be. Yes. So it was 2021, like the first three months, I was pumped, you know, I was so motivated, like apply for every job I was, I deem, my, I, I deem myself qualified for. And then the process kind of repeated itself again, like getting rejected. And then the mind games came back and I'm like, oh, really? Like, like it's, it's been like 15 months, 16 months and then 18 months coming up and I still am not where I want to be. So yeah. then I was like, what do I do? But then I remembered in those times, it's always good to keep yourself, your, your spirit up. So what you can do is uh, at, at these times, if anyone's struggling out there, even to find uh, some sort of first job, you know, just talk to anyone, uh, talk to your family, uh, talk to your friends. You can let people know of your situation. Uh, you can, there's no shame in telling people that you, that you're finding your first job, that you're finding a role. Because as we know, uh, for generation Z these days, 
the way you find a job is basically you have to know someone, which is, yeah. which is in my opinion, like 80% of how, how most people get a job these days. You need to know someone in the company because that, that's worth more than your experience. That's worth more than what you've done. When you know someone on the inside, it, it really helps a lot to find a job. Okay. So we're reaching the tail end of this story. So finally it was May, June, 2021. I was successful enough to be invited to an interview. And then I was just, honestly, I was just expecting myself to be rejected to, you know, to move on again. Uh, when the emails come through, I don't even read it, read it anymore. I just press control F and search. <laughs> Thank you for applying. <laughs> and it would oh, just no. appear. So then it, it became like that. I was, I was so demotivated. So, you know, uninspired. But then this one, uh, lo and behold, I had an interview, did well in the interview. Then they gave me like an assessment task where I had to do like a task related to the company. Then after that, I was successful. Uh, it sort of just came out of nowhere, if I'm being honest, because I maybe it was because I really expected nothing to come out of it. But yeah, but it's really true. Everything does come to an end. So then I got offered a position. So the obvious answer is saying yes. So. That's why I did, because you just need something for your first big break, and then you can branch off if if that's what you want to do. Or in my case, I didn't know what kind of field I wanted to work in, so it's also good to just try it out and see what happens. Um, if you don't like what you're doing, then you're more than entitled to change your career direction. You're more, you can just change uh, whatever you want to be. Yep. So I finally got my first role. So this first role, just to sum it up, is in product management. So in product management, I'm a graduate product analyst. And what I do is we search, we have the company I work for, we have product, we have a product that we provide to customers and I have to search ways on how to improve it, uh, search ways, how competitors are doing it and how we can keep up with them, how we can compete with them and how we can get customers to choose us over them. So that's basically the role and the company itself, they specialize in wayfinding technology. So wayfinding technology is basically an, an information system that that lets users uh, go from point A to point B. So think of it like an interactive kiosk. So when you search something up from your current location, you can figure out where you currently are and then they'll give you steps to go to point B. Yeah. And the good thing about this one though, you can scan a QR code on your phone and then it'll also come up on your phone. So you don't need to be, you don't need to stay on the kiosk anymore, but you can go on your mobile phone and just walk straight to the, to the location. So in a nutshell, that's what wayfinding is. So yeah. So then when I got my first role, um, I have to admit the feeling was, I didn't feel excited per se. I just felt like relieved that, that the journey was finally over because all in all, it took me 18 months. So one and a half year to finally land my first role. And I know uh, friends that I have, they landed a first role within months. And, you know, that's not, I'm, I'm not saying that I, I wish I landed the same, but I just want to point out that everyone's experience is different. And also, uh, you know, we shouldn't compare ourselves to others. Maybe, maybe the reason why people got certain jobs faster is because maybe they just did good in, in, in the interview or because yeah. it was their time. But in my case, it wasn't my time yet. So in those 18 months, I really had to go on a journey to learn more about myself to, you know, and to never give up. That's what I'll say. Guys, uh, if you're struggling in similar problems like these, just never give up because when you give up, then you don't know uh, what's going to happen if you didn't, right? Because if you believe, it means that you're already halfway there, no matter what. So having willpower is very good and even just telling yourself to never give up because the road is long the road is nasty the road can be can be a suffering sometimes and and for the, and for people who tell you that it's going to be easy well they're wrong because it's not going to be easy you have to be incredibly incredibly lucky for it to be easy but it's a journey and just imagine yourself you're on a train but as you know when you go on a train there's always that final stop. There's that last destination for the train. And for each person, it's different. It may be longer. The train ride may be longer than others. But eventually, the train tracks will finish and it will be the last station. So in any struggle you're going through, guys, just stay on the train. Don't leave because your time will come. So exactly. yeah, never give up. And always, 
always just believe in yourself and good things will come to those who wait. Cool. Well, thank you so much for sharing, Justin. Um, in all honesty, I wanted to comment on a few things that he's brought up. Uh, for those of you guys that are still watching up until this point, thank you so much. Now, I wanted to point out last uh, the last point that Justin mentioned where nothing comes easy because look, nothing comes easy ever is worth it, in my opinion. So that's one point that I sort of made to myself here on my own little notepad thing on the right screen. Now, he did touch on his little break during the start of uh, last year and this year as well. Now, look, guys, breaks are very healthy. Now, it's super underrated because look, a lot of people that talk about success, talk about working hard and dedicating 24-7 of your time to one sort of goal. But look, burning out is a thing. You know, I'm sure Justin has felt this. And given that being rejected that many times, you know, as sad as that is, you do tend to get burnt out because, you know, it makes you question yourself. You know, are you really good enough for the role or what are you doing? Mm. Um, I think taking a mental reset is a very underrated sort of tool to use. Um, I take one myself, to be honest. And I, I encourage you guys, for all you younger people that start watching us, that don't be so caught up in the work that you just throw your your whole self into it. Yeah. Um, one, it's not healthy. And, and, and I don't think it's a smart way to work, to be honest. You know, it's not a very effective sort of means to de dedicate your time. Mm -hmm. It's a lot better to work smartly, like how Justin would say, probably, um, than to work extremely hard that you end up burning yourself out anyway. Because burning out leads to sort of days where you're very unproductive, where you just sit there, you know, questioning yourself every day, wanting to sort of switch out and just do something else. Um, the whole mental reset thing is very underrated. And I think the next thing that I wanted to sort of point out to you guys is Justin did mention this a few times over his story that patience is also very an underrated skill to have when it comes to stuff like this. So having the patience and the drive to keep going, even if you get knocked back down, is also a very nice sort of thing to have. Um, yeah, that's very true. To have. I know a lot of people will come across this, especially given that it's going to be your probably your first sort of junior entry sort of career-wise. Um, a little story that I have to share with my recent job was early this year, I was sort of offered to take uh, the point in my team, um, in the little team in my job. So it was my first time ever handling people under me which is you know um, i'm young but a lot of the people in my team were older so obviously experience was always in question and i did go through this little phase where people were like you know um he's very young is he going to be able to do it and what i sort of told my boss was look put me on a trial basis you know for six months and you know you don't even have to give me the pay rise you know if mm. if, if you know pay is not in the question but if you think at the end of six months that my age, my background, my experience so far isn't good enough or cut off for the role, then don't give it to me. Um, yeah. And I think that's one big lesson for all young people that if question, um, if the experience question ever comes around, just tell them, look, give me a more entry-based role, you know, even if it's as little as data entry roles, you know, where, you know, where you just sit there putting stuff on Excel, right? Hmm. Getting in and working hard and showing them that you've got what it takes, people do notice, you know? Um, whether or not you have the connection or the experience, people will notice. And I've found out, you know, during my experiences that you've just got to show the work and people always notice. I think what's great about us young people is the time that we have to switch up as well. So if you don't get it in the first time, then try another three more times. You just don't know. That's true. We still have so much time to do so many other things. You know, if the first passion you find isn't your passion forever, then go, go out and find another one, right? <laughs> Uh, so that's my little takes on what Justin has said. So again, I thank you so much for sharing that, Justin. Um, a lot of the story I actually didn't know of yet. So a lot of this was brand new to me too. So I hope you guys take something with what we've shared and sort of apply it to your everyday life because that's what we ultimately want to happen uh, by the end of the video. Did you find any interview cliches when you're out and about? I'm sure you oh, had a few there. Oh yeah, there was quite a lot uh in the process of applying maybe i'll just share a few sure so when i had all these random interviews there was a set of recurring questions that each employer would ask and these questions can include where do you see yourself in five years so when you yes. see a question like that um, let's be honest you probably don't have a plan in five years uh, <laughs> or or you have some sort of imaginary dream and then what else we also have questions there was also questions asked towards me like what were your greatest what's your weaknesses What's your strengths? What's your greatest weaknesses? Then they also ask, why do you want to work for us? Yeah. 
Well, my answer in my head would have been like, I, I just need a job. Like, that's it. That's, that's how I want to work here. Yeah, the first thing everyone, the first thing that comes into everyone's mind is practically, you know, I just want money. That's mm. the very first thing. And in all honesty, guys, answering these questions, you know, don't put too much pressure into it. You don't have to tell them that, you know, you want to become the CEO of the company in five years right. or like, I'm going to work so damn hard that I'm going to take your job. <laughs> you know talking to your interviewer that just keep it personal you know if in five years time you find yourself you know moving on and just taking your experiences from this company and maybe taking it to your next career path then let them know so just to, just to give a some examples and some of the questions so mm. let's say the first question where do you see yourself in five years i think i, I answered that from a goal perspective so what i mean by this is in five years, I would like to already progress from this role that I'm applying for to a higher role. So when you show some kind of ambition, some kind of, uh, some kind of motivational, like, uh, mindset that you want to just progress faster, then that's a good take on where you'll see yourself in five years. Then you can also give answers like in five years, maybe I would like to own a house. I would like to have my own car. Um, I would like to, I see myself, you know, living in, you know, in, in maybe my own place. And then, you know, you, you point out some basic life goals, but then like Tristan said earlier, you don't need to put so much pressure on yourself to answer these mm -hmm. as long as you're honest, because if you're honest, then they'll like you for your honesty. We did mention last episode that we were going to go through uh, work from home productivity tips. So we don't want to, we don't want you guys, just a little disclaimer actually, before we start, you know, a lot of these are sort of our own um, tried and tested they're not really, mm. I guess you'd say OHS approved or anything like that. So look, if you guys take our advice, then you know we're happy for you guys to do that. But I'll pass it back on to Justin and see what he sort of has in mind there. Yeah. So for those of you who work from home, so this would mean you're facing the computer screen all day. So yeah. the first big break, uh, sorry, the first big tip I would take to you guys is take a break. Mm. So just after an hour or another two hours, you jump, go take a break, go for a walk, stretch, uh, go eat something because it's very easy to be clock, uh, clogged up in all your tasks that you have to do. And it's very easy to just sit here all day and just look at the screen. But you also need to take a break realistically, no matter how busy you may be or no matter how much you have on your plate, because it's very easy to burn yourself out just like that. So what I mean by this is, when you're working, just do Monday's work for Monday. Don't do Monday to Friday's work on Monday yeah. because what else are you going to do for the rest of the week? You could say it's a four day break, but come on, your work never stops. There's always going to be some kind of work approaching your way. So learn to balance yourself, learn to take care of yourself physically and learn to just set alarms, set timers. Uh, yeah. And when it rings, just stand up, get out of your room. Yeah, overworking is very common when it comes to working from home um, because you do lose track of time and your day, uh, days actually. You know, sometimes I've come across people that think it's still Thursday when in fact it's when in fact it's already Friday, right? Mm. Now, a lot of that stems to the fact that, you know, you never leave a room, you know, you probably go out for an hour's walk during this lockdown thing that people just tend to overwork. And I like the points that Justin brought up. And there is one little routine that I've sort of said to myself that I only work for sort of blocks in my day. Um, I don't mean for the rest of the day I sit around, but I try to eliminate the hardest of tasks in the first, let's say, four hours of my day. Um, you know, so it's nonstop working from, I don't know, one time, I start sort of different times, but let's just give it a sort of like a, let's say nine to five, right? So mm -hmm. I work between nine to 12. All of my hardest stuff, you know, meetings, um, you know, clients that we have to talk to and all that sort of stuff, look, they're all put in the first you know, block of my day. And then obviously it's lunchtime. And then I set another sort of extra hour or so just to cruise by. The only reason I do this is because I think that I'm really effective when it comes to just working distraction free for a good block of time and then resting for another hour and then killing it again the last half of the day. It sort of gives me time to do like a reset um, because I know a lot of you guys are probably thinking that, look, this lockdown doesn't affect me as much, but it really does. You know, it does get to you mm. because as humans, I think we are so, we need to be, you know, we need to be touched. We need to be held. We need to be socialized, socializing all the time. It's sort of human nature. Now, when that all gets taken away from us, you know, we're just sort of alone. 
and no person ever likes to be alone you know yeah. um you may say like you do but realistically you know mentally you're still feeling the need for human interaction so you know i guess the biggest take from this is just make sure you take your breaks mm. and respect your breaks you know, everybody yeah. needs a break yeah. i think those were our main productivity tips so we yes. just want to keep it brief but and we also understand that not everyone's working from home so i know because this is generation z uh you guys maybe have worked in fast food or retail so we also have advice for that but uh just for now because we're in lockdown in sydney so just take care of yourself physically uh check on your friends uh, ask them how they're doing and if just talk to someone if, if you need to talk some to someone just send them a message because at these times we all need each other you know just make sure you're there for each other is the biggest take as well that we're gonna sort of you know throw out there and yeah hopefully you guys are all staying safe so hopefully you guys enjoyed justin's story because i know i did there was a lot of things that i learned from that whole story um so in the spirit of things given that this was justin's episode in a way um, i'm gonna let him end things and i hope we'll see you guys in the next and last episode for covid cool cool so this episode is the second episode of three uh, covid related episodes so our last episode will be primarily dedicated to the lockdown in sydney and just the whole coronavirus situation here in australia so you're going to be hearing us give our take our opinion on everything everything sydney all the way all the way from uh the beginning of the pandemic so stay tuned for that and we hope you enjoyed today's podcast and we'll see you guys very soon oh and uh by the way if Feel free to leave your comments down below. And also, if you have any more feedback, any more topics you want you want us to see, you can leave it below or you can send us a private message if you know me or Tristan personally. And we'll look into incorporating that to future segments. Yeah, but for now, thank you guys for listening and we'll see you very soon. Take care. Thanks, guys. See you around.